morning my darlings welcome to a brand new vlog it is saturday morning and today is a day that i've been looking forward to all week because <laughs> there are so many little jobs little wholesome home jobs that i have wanted to do during the week and <coughs> excuse me and just not found the time to do including making my rhubarb and rose cake which i think is turning into a bit of a joke at the moment it's become one of those things where i think i've mentioned this cake in the last three vlogs and not had time to make it so I'm going to make it today then I've got a massive gardening to-do list um but there's so much else I want to do I don't even know if I'm going to get to it but I desperately want to plant some seeds I want to do my dahlia planting in pots I want to plant the peonies that I picked up at Dalesford last Monday that was ages ago and I still haven't had time to do that yeah there's a lot of things we need to do in the garden heartbreaking news <laughs> this morning uh we were watching gardener's world oh my gosh fellow gardeners are all absolutely um on cloud nine at the moment because gardener's world is basically the best gardening tv program monty don and it's back so it's back for the spring season we had been watching so many reruns um but yeah the official season has just begun but monty don in literally the first three minutes of the episode was talking about his grasses and he showed his grasses and they look exactly the same as ours in the herbaceous border and he was like very sadly my grasses are dead let me show you what our grasses look like when the camera focuses there we go excuse the very ugly um covers that we've got on our outdoor furniture we're going to try and get some better ones but yeah we've got loads of these grasses in our herbaceous border they're completely dead um because of the freezing cold winter however a slight silver lining is that he was saying, or was it Nicholson's that were telling us, I can't remember, that these grasses can just keep on expanding. If you remember what size they were when we put them in, and now they're <laughs> huge, um, they are actually getting too big, and I would like my flowers to get huge and not my grasses. So I think, unfortunately, obviously it's also really expensive to replace things, but they're all dead, so we're going to have to take them out and put new ones in which not today thank goodness but that is going to be a task but yeah nice to watch gardeners world over at our morning coffee anyway charlie's in the gym i know when he gets out the gym he's going to want to make breakfast so i'm going to get cracking on my rhubarb and rose cake then we're going to have breakfast then we're going to quickly head to dalesford to get some flowers for mother's day and a few other little bits and bobs um then i also need to make my wild garlic i think it's like a tart or something it's got potatoes in it a quiche something to take with us tomorrow we're going to charlie's mum and dad's for mother's day charlie's dad's doing a barbecue and we're all bringing yummy things to have with it and my brother is also coming over tonight and we are going to soho farmhouse for dinner and it's the rugby at five o'clock so yeah <laughs> it's a lot to get on with today it's only quarter past nine Charlie and I were woken bright and early at half past six by dicky just doing a really loud bark every 10 seconds he was just like our morning alarm but as you might be able to see clearly somebody got plenty of sleep yes i'm talking about you and my little alarm clock sausage other sausage dog owners let me know down below if your dog always seeks to position him oh look he's such a little tired baby yes i'm not surprised you're tired you little minx if your sausage dogs are essentially mountain goats and they just want to be as high as possible if he could get on that part of the sofa he would um but you're my little mountain goat, alarm clock, badger, and fluffy chicken. And I could not love you any more, even though you work mummy and dad up a little bit early on a weekend morning. You're very fluffy, and I adore you. That's a funny noise, my dex. So, my first ingredient for the rhubarb and rose cake, unsurprisingly, if you didn't catch the end of the last vlog, this is the current um, state of the greenhouse. Everything is growing very well. Sweet peas. My little, ooh, look at these. My little tulips are going to be sprouting soon, so I'll put them somewhere more visible. Broad beans are coming. I've got some little lettuces in there. Um, my little, I can't actually remember what it is. I think it begins with R. Yeah, so the reason I came in here, sorry, I just stopped mid-sentence, is to get my little, yeah, exactly that, to pick some rhubarb for the cake. So you might remember Charlie and I have got rhubarb forces 
in our garden and basically if you force rhubarb it's essentially meaning that you've prevented it from um, seeing any sunlight over winter and it forces the rhubarb to come up early like so look at that my goodness you can only force rhubarb i think it's i need two hands for that i think it's once every three years so one year forced two years unforced it means you get it earlier and it's also sweeter in its flavor so i'm gonna take the uh the top off i need three to four large stems so oh i'm excited this is my first time using my homegrown rhubarb little hall, very colourful, pink and green. Okay my darlings, I have chopped the rhubarb. I'm pretty sure rhubarb leaves are poisonous aren't they? <laughs> so how close to the leaves do you get? Obviously the stalks get quite pale towards the top, I bloom and hope that that's okay. Might have to do a quick Google. I've got 50 grams of caster sugar here, which I'm just putting on top of the rhubarb. And then this is actually going to go in the agar for 10 minutes. And I guess it'll just kind of glaze um, and make the rhubarb perhaps a little bit softer. And then this will go into the mix. It's quite a lot of sugar. I think that's enough. Alexa, set timer for 10 minutes. Forgot to mention, it should have a splash of water with it as well. So this has been, I actually put too much water in, so a splash is all you need, but I'm sure it'll be fine. This now needs to cool down, so I think I'm actually gonna take it outside because I'm not sure I've got room in the fridge. Let's have a look. Can you honestly tell me that you've ever seen a sweet little boy in your entire life? You're just, I just adore you. You're so glossy. You're so handsome, you're so rugged. If you were a human, I, who would Dexter be if he was a human? Sometimes I look at the like long black curly hair and I'm like, hmm. I've got a picture of a celebrity in my head but I can't remember who his, <laughs> what his name is, I'm so awful at celeb names. Oh, you're just divine. Look at your paws. How can you have such neat paws and such scruffy everywhere else? You're so gorgeous and I'm a little bit in love with you. Oh, you're the best dog in the world. 10 minutes later, well actually more like 15 I would say, and the garlic, garlic, rhubarb, is nicely cooled. Okay, so we have to, ooh, they're very soft and squidgy. We have to save a few bits of rhubarb that will be chopped um, to go on top of the cake. And then the rest of it is going to get I think that's probably enough for the top of the cake. The rest of it is going to get pureed and then that will be used in the actual um, cake batter. Cake batter itself. Hey Dixie, well you finished exploring your garden, have you? Come inside my sweet friend. Sorry my sweet bunny. We've got some rhubarb puree. If you can hear a hum in the background, it's because I've turned the oven on because the temperature is just a little bit more reliable and accurate in the oven as opposed to the agar. That looks and smells amazing. <laughs> Do you know what this looks like? Okay, comment down below what you think this looks like. And any one of my generation, you will understand when I say tubby custard. Time for tubby custard. Oh no, it was Time for tubby bye-byes. <laughs> wow, I'm so weird. Okay, but yeah, this is literally... Do you remember that machine? Do you remember Nunu? Nunu, it was like a little robot elephant, wasn't it? Oh my gosh, the color is just sensational, isn't it? It looks so amazing next to my jumper as well. What gorgeous colors. So as I mentioned, that's gonna go into my cake batter. We've got flour, we've got eggs, we've got butter, we've got bicarb of soda and baking powder. It's pretty much like a normal kind of cake recipe. So I'm gonna do all of that in the Thermomix um, and hopefully we'll have a delightful rhubarb cakey loaf. So in goes two eggs and 270 grams of caster sugar. Ah. 
Okay, my darlings, in here we've got 270 grams of flour, 140 grams of butter, a teaspoon of bicarb of soda, and a teaspoon of, teaspoon of baking powder. We're gonna whisk them together. Hmm. That doesn't look like a gig batter. Adding in the rhubarb puree. Okay, consistency wise, I think I'm just gonna add the tiniest bit of milk to this. The recipe that I'm following didn't call for any, but I just feel that it's a tad thick. Right, I've added in 18 grams of milk, and I know that when I make lemon drizzle cake, it asks for 20, and that is always a much better consistency. I know you shouldn't really mess around with um, like quantities on your baking, but, oh. That looks much more like a cake batter. I'm not very good at lining cake tins. task. Let's try this batter. Mmm. Very subtly rhubarb -y. That is yummy. Mmm. And now we slice the um, rhubarb, which we saved. Oh, it doesn't slice very well because it's so mushy. Okay. We squidge the rhubarb and add that to the top of the cake. I guess this will just add a little bit of texture. Yeah, slicing is not going to work. Just placing that on top after a bit of light smushing. Technical term, of course. Very messy job. Not a professional baker in the slightest. So I'll show you very carefully. It looks like, can you see? It looks like this. I guess the cake will maybe rise up around the rhubarb and it'll get engulfed. And this is going to go in the oven for 45 minutes. Alexa, set timer for 45 minutes. Okay, my darlings, while that is in the oven, I would like to do a little unboxing with you. I placed a Nesta Porter order a couple of days ago, and it's arrived, and I think there's some really lovely pieces in here. Well, I know there's some really lovely pieces in here. And I've also got some bits from previous orders, which I'll probably also show you throughout the video as well. This is a paid partnership with Netta Porter, which as always is just a dream come true. I always opt for the basic packaging. Just means a little bit less boxes, a little bit more environmentally friendly. And it goes without saying that I will leave all of these pieces linked in the, oh no, <laughs> plant scissors. I'll leave all of these pieces linked in the description box down below and what that means if you are watching on a mobile is you just need to click the word more by the video title and then I think you need to press it again it's a little bit more hidden these days and um, if you're watching it on a computer it's literally just below the video you can open up the description box and all the links will be in there I always link everything that I wear and talk about in my YouTube videos so if there's ever something that's been featured you can probably find the link to it in the description box and I always put any little discount codes in there as well. Sometimes I forget them, sometimes I remember and I put them on the screen, but that is where you'll find them. My jumper that I'm wearing today as well, this is a Loewe jumper. Loewe have got such gorgeous knitwear at the moment and I treated myself to this one. It's quite a nice piece for transitional time of year because it's a very spring-like colour and yet it's nice and cosy. So I've still got the beautiful packaging. I am savouring things like this tissue paper for for somebody who is moving house very soon. I'm not giving away who it is and what's happening. I feel like I've been secretive on a few recent videos. Okay, I think here we have got the Zimmerman dresses because I cannot resist a Zimmerman dress. I love that you get the Netta Porter garment bags as well. Very, very handy especially when you are traveling. Okay. 
how's the lighting here? I hope it's okay. So we have got two dresses from the Zimmerman New Season Collection. I think this one's probably gonna end up being a real favorite, but I thought I would order both of them because I love the detail on that one. I'm probably gonna give these a steam and then I will pop some little try on clips on the screen for you to see. I love the design details on this. You've got the elasticated cuff. In fact, with Zimmerman, once you know your silhouette that you love, they often use the same pattern, the same silhouette and bring it back in different patterns. Um, different fabrics. This is covered in so many of my favorite blooms. You've got peonies, you've got Californian poppies, that looks like a geranium, <laughs> it even looks like they've got hellebores, yeah little hellebores on here. Gorgeous, I absolutely love a floral print and I love a Zimmerman dress um, and yeah I cannot wait to try this one on. And then this is a sleeveless version, quite a low, oops, quite a low v-neck. It does very cleverly. This is actually a really good design detail. So it's got a little hoop here and a button, so it's not going to be too low cut, hopefully. Beautiful pleated detail and a gorgeous material, and I love the elasticated waistband. The photo on the website made the skirt look really voluminous, almost tutu-esque. So again, I can't wait to see how this looks and perfect for any spring sunshine if you've got any holidays booked or if you live somewhere slightly warmer or if you're already getting excited about bringing new things into your wardrobe for summer, then this is just such a delight. Now onto garment bag numero due. Oh, <laughs> and it's like all the treats at the bottom. Can't wait to show you. Ooh. <gasps> oh my gosh, <laughs> I've been so excited for this. Here we have got the most Josie print in the entire world. This green, that lone coat hanger is really going to annoy me. I'm sorry if that's been annoying you the whole time. I'm gonna go and take it down in a second. But here we have got the most gorgeous, very Josie print. It is a green floral pattern in the most elegant Erdem dress. I'm actually going away next week and I believe the dress code for some of the places we're going to is covered shoulders and covered knees. So this could work fantastically well. I hope it fits me perfectly. If it doesn't, and it's still a really fabulous dress, it's one that you could take to a tailor and they could make it just look as though it was built for you and designed for you and fitting absolutely perfectly. So we'll see on the try on clips. It's also this almost seersuckery kind of material. It's not seersucker. In fact, I don't know if you'll be able to see, but it's like, imagine a seersucker base, but then florals have been like ironed through it, if that makes sense. Really unusual fabric, but absolutely stunning. Um, the florals are, what are they? Again, it looks like, a, that looks like a giant peony um, that's almost going a bit over. That looks like, could be a lily, not sure, but gorgeous green floral dress. Need I say more? Maxi! Righty-ho, it's getting exciting, it's getting exciting. All the little bits at the bottom, okay. <laughs> That was the worst Australian accent in the world. So next I have got a little baggy bag from Jeanne Faber, who does the most beautiful, um, she's most known for her like headbands and things like that. They are pricey, but for very special occasions, like a wedding, uh, her pieces are just sensational. This is a potential accessory for the second day of our wedding. We're having, I don't know if I'm giving too much away again, but... I won't be able to keep it a secret, let's be honest. We're having like a barbecue summer garden party on day two. And oh, I thought this could just be the most gorgeous hair accessory. Will I be able to wait until the middle of summer for our wedding? I don't know, but isn't it gorgeous? So I've got my hair half up, half down today. How does it look? I can't see. I think it's absolutely adorable it's covered in pearls I think that is so pretty so I might take this into the hairdresser next time I go Ooh. because I'm probably gonna do a little hair wedding hair trial day so I could take this with me and do some practices but I think that's gorgeous add that to my moving house pile I should probably keep this because it's very delicate in its little dust bag you know a hair clip is fancy when it comes in a dust bag up next, a little box from Fendi. I think this is sunglasses. Don't need any more sunglasses, but I ooh. <laughs> these are rather gorgeous. Again, we've got that trip coming up next week. I think I thought these were going to be pearly, but they're actually not pearl. It's just a plain ivory kind of plastic. Very spring-esque. 
<laughs> I like the shape. They are quite fun, um, but I, mm, I don't know if I need any more sunglasses. And when I want to wear light colours, I do tend to wear my fabulous, you remember my D&G ones, that I got in the OC Moor, the Simon Outlet, years ago. If you do remember that, then I like the little bag. <laughs> it's like a puffer coat, puffer coat bag for your sunglasses. Quite a good idea, actually. What's next? I feel like in this haul, we're seeing all the different ways that Netta Porter packaged their um, items. Moving house packaging. Okay, so I think it's new, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's new that Netta Porter stock Lululemon. And I saw some gorgeous pieces which I thought would be very nice additions to my workout wardrobe. First of all, this top here, which has got the uh, support for the bazooms or the Michael Bublé's in there. I think that looks like a really flattering uh, soft V neckline. And then it's not as short and revealing as a sports bra. So yeah, I thought this would be a really practical top for whether it's for my Pilates. I'll probably wear it a lot for Pilates um, and also for my PT sessions. So I will give that a little try for you. You'll be able to see that on the screen here. And then I think this is last but not least, I think this might be a few more Lulu bits. It is indeed. I got a little, oops, Daisy. Little matching set. Little sports bra in this almost like gray tone lilac. It's the Align sports bra. If you have got pretty large boobs, they don't offer a huge amount of support, I would say, in my past experience. I don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Little boob perks, literally. Um, but yeah, I love the Align sets for yoga, Pilates, slightly more or less strenuous exercise. And the Align leggings are quite possibly some of the most comfortable things I've ever tried in my life. And I got the matching kind of lilac-y bottoms. These feel a little bit thicker than my current Align leggings, so maybe they do them in slightly different thicknesses. These are the HR Pant, powered by Nulu fabric. Buttery soft Nulu fabric, feels weightlessly light, added lycra, waistband lies flat. Um, yeah, just a really lovely collection from Lululemon, and I'm very pleased that they now stock it on Nether Potter. So that's what I purchased in my latest, um, my latest haul, I guess you could say, of bits from Nether Potter. And yeah, as I said throughout the vlog, I will show you a few other bits which I picked up from there lately. Let me just quickly show you some of the accessories, just super quickly, and then I'm going to go down and um, tidy up the kitchen, ready to bring the cake out of the oven. So this uh, is something which I chose again for our upcoming trip. It's from a brand called Gigi. Burris, Gigi Burris Millinery, and it's just a really gorgeous straw hat, beautiful quality, I like the light tone of the straw, and then it's got this really gorgeous trim detail, which is, as you can see, pink and white, thought that was lovely, and I do love a hat, so that's gorgeous, and then a little footwear treat from C by Chloe, again, <laughs> for our upcoming trip, I thought these were just rather fabulous. I, I know some people really can't bear anything thick between their toes, like some people find even flip-flops uncomfortable. I don't find <laughs> thickness between my toes, that sounds so weird. Um, I don't find flip-floppy type things uncomfortable, so, and I do find them very secure on my feet. These look like they're going to be very secure. The metallic I love, I find metallics so versatile. And I just can't help but feel that this is the kind of sandal that will go with so many things and just look really lovely. I'll try them on. The only concern that I'm thinking straight away is that the base of the shoe looks quite big and I don't want to look like I'm wearing flippers out and about. But we'll try them on, we'll give them a go and you can let me know what you think. Right, my darlings, I am going to head downstairs. Let's see how the cake is looking. And the next thing we need to do is start on the icing. The cake still has another 10 minutes. I need to put my beautiful Holland Cooper outfit that I wore, it was only yesterday, to the Cheltenham uh, races. I need to put this in my fashion fridge to give it a little clean. Still love and absolutely adore using my fashion fridge, my LG Styler, which basically, you'll see in a second, it's like a fridge, but the complete opposite. It steams your clothes, so it's essentially like a mini version of sending your bits to the dry cleaner. This is not dirty in the slightest, um, but 
you know, I think it's just nice to freshen things up after you've worn them, especially if you're just going to then pop them in your um, wardrobe for a while. And then the skirt as well. How gorgeous is this um, material? I think it's absolutely stunning. I loved wearing this outfit. And the skirt can also go in the LG styler. Charlie has bought this little dressing table in here to um, see what I think, basically. I feel that this space needs something a lot chunkier. Obviously, this chest of drawers used to be there, but I'm not sure it's quite right. I think it's too spindly. It's too... Um, it's not chunky enough, basically. That is my opinion. Right, this is the fashion fridge. This cupboard is just perfect for it because I'm not gonna lie, it is quite an ugly contraption. If I was building a dressing room from scratch all over again, I would probably actually try and like build a section that this could fit in. But we just happen to have this cupboard which is useless for everything except for the fridge. I've got my sensational Oscar de la Renta floral hydrangea dress. This is still in stock on Netaporta, by the way. If you didn't catch my Instagram stories from when I wore this to the International Women's Day dinner, I'll pop a photo on the screen here. I loved wearing this. I think I'm actually gonna take this to Paris with me next week because where we're staying, oh, should I give it away? Well, you'll probably, you probably will have seen it on my stories already. Um, we're actually going to Versailles and the gardens of Versailles are sensational, as per what I've seen on Instagram at least. Um, I hope it's good weather and we can take some nice photos, but I thought I'd take this with me in case the weather is on our side because I'd love to get some outdoor photos in the Versailles Gardens wearing this. So this has been been through the fashion fridge. And then I do like to put my coats in there as well. This is my gorgeous Dior coat and <coughs> I don't wash it every time I wear it <laughs> because I wear it a lot, but oh. See, this is one thing that the styler doesn't get rid of. I'm gonna have to dabble that by hand because it essentially just like blasts the styler unit with steam and then lightly kind of shakes your items, which does give them a light cleanse. But I would say I pop this in my fashion fridge maybe once a month or every few times that I've worn it in London and it just keeps it fresh without having to send it to the dry cleaner every time. Okay, I'm gonna pop these bits in. do up the buttons on the coats if I can because inside the LG Styler it really shakes your items and some things do fall off the hanger if you don't want to do up the button. Okay, the fridge is turned on. I'm gonna put this on a normal mode, 39 minutes. Um, I better put wool actually because the material is wool. We don't want any shrinkage. There we go. Oh, it is bright in the greenhouse. Don't worry, I'm not gonna be doing gardening in this light colored knit. I've just got changed into this one. It's another Loewe jumper from Netta Porter. We're about to head to Dalesford, but the cake needs another, I think 10 minutes, maybe it's the milk that I added, but it needs a tiny bit longer in the oven. So we're just gonna film some Instagram stories for the old house channel. I think what I'm gonna do on there at the, <laughs> Sorry, Dickie's just <laughs> pulling a very strange position out there. I think all we're going to do is do gardening jobs for the weekend on Old House Instagram stories or let you know what gardening jobs we're gonna be doing on Instagram stories. And if you miss them or you want to see more, um, I'll pop a little preview on the screen here. We do every month do gardening jobs for March, gardening jobs for April, and I think now's a good time to start doing it on stories because now is the time when there are a lot more jobs. As you can tell by me shielding my eyes, the sun has come out, it's mostly blue skies. I've popped over the top my, of my lovely knitwear, my Holland Cooper gilet jacket combination. I think this is called the country, country coat, maybe? Oh my gosh, I just noticed that the crabapple arch is starting to come into leaf. It won't be long. So, I know I mentioned a few gardening jobs earlier, but I've got my Dahlia order from Dahlia Beach that I showed you, I think at the end of the last vlog. So these need to go in some little plant pots. Had a compost delivery from a Rocket Grow, which is great, so need to sort that out. I've got this little tub of, I think this is Moroccan mint, which we got from Dalesford. Going to pop this in one of our dolly tubs and mint just takes over. So you literally only need to buy 
one little pot like this and put it in an outside plant pot and it will just literally last you all year and probably could possibly last your entire lifetime because mint keeps coming back and keeps coming back so that's good i've also got some bad oh <laughs> there's only little speaking of mint i've got some mint seeds here red shiso wow you have to soak them for eight hours before sowing so i'm going to pop them in some water now a deep purple herb with notes of coriander basil cinnamon and citrus that sounds lovely and then i got these little oh that's nice it comes with markers very handy these are great little seedling trays from amazon they are biodegradable they do tend to literally like fall apart by the time you need to by the time you're done with them so that's fine and i think i brought you in here this morning didn't i and showed you my seedling update so I won't bore you with that again. But yeah, we're just gonna film these stories and then we're going to head to Dalesford for our morning errands. Perfect timing, we're just about to head out and the cake is done. Well, I just have to check that this is gonna come out clean. Yes, perfect, okay. We are now heading to Dalesford, so I'm gonna pop this on a cooling rack and then as soon as we get back, I will do the icing. The old Defender and the new Defender we're taking the oldie out to Dalesford. We don't drive it that often, but you have to drive it about once a month, otherwise the battery might uh, decide to give up the ghost. Let's hit the road. So grateful for these new little steps. <laughs> just got here and I think this is the busiest I've ever seen the car, car park even the overflow seems to be it's gonna be busy it's gonna be very we busy we timed this really badly but we because have. we were working yesterday and we were away yesterday obviously we ideally want to buy a few bunches of fresh flowers well we were very lucky someone literally just left the prime space so we're right by the door it's our lucky day just picking up some Mother's Day gifts and some oh, bits yeah. for ourselves lovely Ooh. A rose pebble soap. In fact, I think Lola does quite like um, solid soaps. Might get her one of these as well. Pretty little potted plant. That looks lovely. This table is always beautifully decorated. Oh, they've got their Mother's Day uh, little bouquets here. That is gorgeous. Oh, I might just get this one. Picked up these beautiful bunches of flowers. Just call mum, so are you okay? Yeah, I'll sort so it. So many of my favourites. Anemones, little narcissus in there. These are beautiful. I need to remind myself what they are. Um, and some gorgeous tulips and ranunculus. Beautiful. It is looking very floral in the greenhouse. Lots of little bits that you can pick up for Mother's Day. If you're building your own herbaceous border this year, definitely recommend these. They dry out really nicely and last forever. What have you spotted? Potted bulbs. Yeah, that's sweet. Little Mother's Day gifts. It's nice because they keep coming back, so you need to store them, don't you? Yeah. Is this a type of lilac? Spring Beauty Daphne? No, it's, a, it's a Daphne, it's not a lilac. But Daphne they look so much like lilac flowers. But Pretty. They, um, they are beautiful. The only thing I'd say is that. Is it a bush? Once they flowered, it just, just drops. Kind of woody with yeah. Leaves. Is that the true? Yeah, short lived. Mm hmm. Is it a little bit late for hellebores? Well, yeah, I mean, they flowered, so if you plant them now, you just these got the will end drop of it. off fairly quickly. They're yeah. almost like the winter anemone, aren't they? Beautiful. I like the artwork, but I'm not such a huge fan of the frames. No, that's why I'm, I'm leaning towards the smaller ones. Oh, Camilla. I love putting that in my little bouquets. Look at all these beautiful flower bouquets. So pretty. Well, we have got quite the haul, including two big bunches of flowers, um, a plant pot, a planter, a basket of narcissi for Charlie's nan. We've got a little pot. We've got some pictures. Oh my goodness, it really is quite the haul. Um, second bunch of flowers. I don't know where that's ended up. I can't get over how gorgeous these are. 
and they smell amazing. Okay, we have made it home from Dalesford. It was very, very busy there, but we got our loot, we got everything that we needed. We picked up a few bits of artwork, one of which I'm saving, it's wrapped up to give to Lala later as a Mother's Day gift, but that will be in the past, she'll have already opened it, so won't be spoiling any surprises. And then we picked up another couple that we are going to have in the house here. So I thought I'd do a little unboxing with you because these are really gorgeous. I think what they've done is Dalesford have collaborated with, I think it's called Jam Jar Flowers. So the first one is the Napita. So what she does is she compresses them in her little flower press. We think we're probably gonna paint these frames because it's too much hassle and expense to reframe them, um, but not such a huge fan of the light colored wood. So if we They're paint this, aren't they? yeah. So if we paint this like a sagey green, <laughs> no surprises there. I think that'll be lovely in the garden bedroom, which is the rebranded gold bedroom. And then, and then, when I first saw this one, I thought it was salvia, which is one of my favourite herbaceous perennials because the more you cut it down, the more it comes back and it's fantastically long-lasting in flower displays, but it's actually spearmint. When spearmint flowers, it looks like this, but yeah, it definitely looks like a salvia. And again, it's just a pressed, dried flower. Both have got purple tones, so it should look really nice together. I'll quickly take them up to the garden bedroom and... Um, show you how they look in there and also show you the room in daylight because when we first revealed the green room to you it was quite a dull day so let's go and have a look it's still not the brightest of days but maybe slightly better lighting than when i last showed you and again i have to say it looks a little bit more bold and flat in the camera um i think it does look nice in real life so you'll just have to take my word for it. When we've got guests, of course, we like to put fresh blooms in here, but nice little picture there. We have got florals. Uh, these are the menus from Time. You know, we like to do that. Yeah, either side of the bed. And what Charlie was saying was it could work in these two panels. It's gonna be a lot of artwork in here, but I think that's quite nice. But mm, unless we paint the frames like a dark green to pick out this, we definitely want to have quite a contrast. I do love the wooden frames, but these are like a, as Charlie said, quite a contemporary grey kind of wood, which is not ideal. But I'm sure I'll come up with him at some point um, and we can discuss a few options. I think maybe a dark green, like the cushions, could work pretty well. But yeah, I have to admit, I do really like how this room looks. I know Charlie wants to find a bigger and better dark wooden dressing table. I'm sure we'll do that eventually. And the curtains just look absolutely gorgeous such lovely pattern i don't think anything has really changed in here one day we'll renovate this bathroom but it's not urgent oh we've got some very skewers are they skewers or are my walls skewers i think they were slightly skewers and then the lovely scallop detail on the blinds here beautiful Ridiculous. Hi guys, it's Hannah Darling. <laughs> My old videos, it was hi guys. Anyway, we just had a scrumdiddly umptious uh, brunch. I was gonna say luncheon, but it was more of a brun brunch. It's a blunch. <laughs> Breakfast lunch. <laughs> that is what brunch is, you sausage. No, blunch. Yeah, anyway, so it we- it's more lunch than, than breakfast. Because brunch is half breakfast, half lunch. Right. Whereas this was more a lunch than a breakfast, so it's a blunch. You are quite spectacular. I'm on to my third outfit change of the day, Holland Cooper knit and Holland Cooper gilet, gilet. Um, because it is now time to do our gardening tasks. The sun is shining, hallelujah. I've also popped on Holland Cooper wellies. Right, darling, what are we doing first? Right. I haven't shown you my new gardening. This is my new favorite gardening overshirt. Charlie's new favorite gardening overshirt coming right up. Pretty sure you've already got one identical, no? Yeah, but that's kind of... So Beaufort and Blake sent me this, and I thought, well, it's 
it's more casual than the one I've got that I wear like in the evening and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, this it's is got a nice uh, collar. I thought this would be perfect then for gardening because it's quite hard. Is it cotton? What is it, twill? What do they call it? Yeah, it's like a twill. Yeah, so I think it'll be quite hard wearing. It's got a uh, corduroy underneath the collar, have you noticed? Yeah, I have. It's really yeah. nice. So yeah. Lovely, right, what are we doing? Like that's one step closer to looking like Monty Don. One oh, step closer to hair. heaven. If you grew your hair, wouldn't it be curly? It would probably be like Monty Don. <laughs> Can you do it? That's the irony. Can we do like one of those Instagram, yeah. um, my transformation? I should just take a photo. Every day. Every day for, for six the next months. Years. Yeah. And I'll basically, hopefully, my How dream I is became. Just to look like a slightly more ripped, a slightly more stacked Monty Don. Monty like, Don's got a six Monty pack. Taken... Boy, it's right, do we think anyway. this is going to come back to life? Yeah, it's fine. That's fine. I'm, I'm blooming out so. About the earlier ones. So this is old. Like this is probably about 10, 15 years old. Mm. It's totally fine. There's loads of green. This actually does always happen. <coughs> maybe not quite as on mass. Mm. But those will all fall off. We'll be able to tease. Oh yeah, them. actually, you can see at the top yeah, that it's coming back. I'm a little bit more worried about the ones we planted last year. Oh. See, they're younger. Mm. This is the problem. It's the new. It's the newer planted stuff mm. that gets blitzed. Um, but first of all, we're going to get the plant supports in. Oh yeah. Um, then, what was the other thing I wanted to do? Oh yeah, start getting the plant supports on the roses and things. Yeah, right, I'll sort, about, sort out the foliage, you go and get the plant supports. Can you spot my baby? I love how he just sits in scenic positions. Ah, don't do that, don't do that. Daddy, I do what I want. Okay, first few jobs done under the watchful, watchful eye of Chief Gardener. You will have just seen in that time lapse Charlie and I setting up these two um, supports and these are here for things obviously to grow up. Here we've got a few of our raspberry plants and raspberry plants they do like a bit of support so what we'll do when they get a bit bigger is we'll just um, maybe use some string to attach the raspberry plant, ras gosh I can't talk, <laughs> raspberry plants onto the um, fencing. We do have a few areas where plants from last year like mint, it's very stubborn. So this probably will end up as an entirely raspberry and strawberry bed, but I might actually dig some of these up and put them in individual pots and then it'd be nice to give to friends. And then the same on the other bed. And then the other thing that you just saw me doing was adding some more mulch to some of the areas where the um, irrigation was coming through. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more spreading of that. And then finally, I've planted our new little rhubarb there. We won't be cutting anything from that this year because when you plant rhubarb, you need to leave it for at least a year before you start cutting it just so that it can grow nice and strong. Okay, my darlings, I've just realised these might be the first outdoor gardening time lapses of the year. I hope you're ready for lots more. So what you will have just seen in that last little time lapse, I just planted up the two new peonies that I picked up on um, last Monday from Dalesford. So we've got the Peonia Festiva Maxima and the P Peony Pecher, 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 that's like the old, old school traditional peony. And you will also have seen me sprinkling um, 
um, sorry about the wind, this little powder both in the hole before putting the peony in and then also around the hole and then also sprinkling it. Yes, I did put you on a tripod, trying not to break any more cameras. Um, I did sprinkle it on the soil just around the existing peonies as well. And what that powder is, sounds rather disgusting it's this fish blood and bone it's a really natural and lovely um for, well not lovely but it's a very effective natural feed for plants and peonies absolutely love it peonies are one of my all-time favorite flowers alongside anemones and salvia so um yeah i just want to make sure that they're doing very very well this year because they didn't do very well in fact i don't think they flowered at all last year i don't think they enjoyed being moved um Last year was quite a shock for a lot of the plants because of the move. If you've seen our before and afters recently, I'll pop one on the screen here of how this area looked this time last year. Just when the peonies want to be emerging, this whole area was a complete mess when we were building it. Um, and I think we just kind of missed the boat with planting the peonies, so they were a little bit angry. But this year I'm going to give them lots of love and attention and hopefully they'll come back stronger. So that last little time lapse that you saw was my planting up of my dahlia tubers and the larger ones are now in the back of my little cold frame. You literally just have to submerge the tubers in soil, in compost and then water them. I have popped the ones in the slightly smaller tubs here in the greenhouse. I should think these ones will probably come into green a little bit sooner, but it's never a bad thing to stagger. I might pop this back in the greenhouse as well. Now the rugby is starting in 15 minutes, but I desperately want to put on at least maybe 5 or 10 of my little tomato seedlings, so I'm going to quickly get that done and then get ready for the rugby. sunshine to do that and I have potted up one two three four five six seven eight nine of my Saint Pierre Saint Pierre tomatoes that's a very good job done still loads of little seedlings um, which to be honest I could give to friends I can use them as backup in case any of these don't take but yeah one packet of tomato seeds goes a very long way now I'm just going to give everything in here a very quick water once again and then go and get myself ready for our evening Okay, my darlings, I had to film a voiceover for this because Charlie was watching the rugby. So I'm making my potato and wild garlic frittata, which, spoiler alert, it was so delicious. So as you just saw, I was chopping up some potatoes into bite-sized bite pieces, and they are currently on the boil. And now I'm chopping up an onion, and I'm going to pop that. I'm going to heat up some olive oil in this pan and putting the onion in there on a low heat for about five minutes I don't want it to get burnt or too colored just to soften a little bit whisking up here eight eggs and slicing my wild garlic which was already washed and clean I've got about well just a handful of wild garlic and just chopping that up nice and small I did save a couple of leaves which I'll use for decoration giving the onions a regular stir and then I'm adding in my wild garlic and this is only going to be in the pan for a couple of minutes just so that it softens and wilts down a little bit. 
So my spuds are done, they are just al dente, and I'm adding my onion and wild garlic mix into the potatoes, which as you can see were previously cut to just a nice bite size amount, adding everything in there, mixing it all together. And then I walked away for about five minutes because upon adding the egg, which I've seasoned with salt and pepper, I didn't want to create a scrambled egg in this bowl, so I thought it was a good idea to leave it. Now I'm just adding in a little bit of crumbled feta because yum, and again, just don't forget to season, whether you season the eggs or season at this stage, and just make sure that everything is mixed in together. This is where I made an error. At this stage, pour it into a non-stick pan. <laughs> Very important because it was so hard for me to get the frittata out of this pan. Huge error. I'm leaving it again on a low hob, adding my decorative leaves. As you just saw, I seasoned it again. And then I popped the lid on for about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, I started to make my buttercream icing for the rhubarb and rose cake. As you can see, a lot of butter. This is not a healthy recipe. A good, I don't know, 200 grams of butter, a little bit of milk, and a good amount of rose water. I did do a little taste test every now and then. Um, and then, oh, it needed a little bit more milk, so I added oat milk. Cake decorating, not my forte, but I gave it my best shot and then decorated with dried rose petals, which looks really, really lovely. It was half time at this point, so I had some company. And then to finish off the frittata, I put it in the agar for a few minutes, just to brown on top. Okay, my darlings, um, it's a good couple of hours later, feeling a little bit more dressed up than last time I showed you an outfit of the day, which was in the greenhouse. That time lapse that you just saw, I was making, well, I will have done a voiceover, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully I'll, I'll have had time to edit a voiceover. I was getting some uh, bits cooked and prepared, ready for our barbecue tomorrow for Mother's Day. So, um, we're about to head to Soho Farmhouse. My hair is really dirty and I can't bother to do anything with it. Very sorry. It's so dark in there. There's literally no point. <laughs> there is no point. I was going to wear a jumper dress, but I remembered I have this gorgeous new Ulla Johnson dress, which is from Netta Porter. It's a very dark green. This feels like a very dark color for me, but it's so elegant. It's the most gorgeous material, beautiful uh, pleats going down. It does actually have its own waist tie, but I've popped on my Valentino little belts. Um, yeah, I just think it's really lovely. And do I have any more labels attached to me? Hopefully not. So I'm gonna pop on some, probably my Chloe boots, because they give me a little height boost and yet I won't completely ruin any suede or anything like that in the gravel at the farmhouse. And I have a quick spritz of fragrance. This is the Ombre Nuit by Christian Dior. I wore this yesterday because I remember it's a really nice long lasting fragrance. And then I'm gonna spray my complexion with the Quarterly Beauty Elixir. When I redo my makeup, when I say redo, plaster more makeup on top of old makeup <laughs> at the end of the day, I just think it looks a lot more fresh if you use a little face mist. Okay, we're good to go. Good morning, my darlings. It's now Sunday morning. It's Mother's Day, which is a lovely day. So we are heading to Charlie's mum and dad's very, very shortly in Windsor. And I'm just finishing off getting ready. I've got this little, uh, the bristle attachment from the Dyson up in my hair. I tried to do my hair very quickly this morning, just got a little bit of movement, but I quite like this hairstyle um, as a more like relaxed, freshly blow dried. I'm using a lip liner here from Clay de Poe. This is a shade that it does not want to tell me. 1029A, if that helps. And I'd really like to know if they have a lipstick that is the exact colour of this, because I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. In fact, I'm just going to leave that, leave that like it is. So yeah, I've had this literally only for like three or four minutes. In fact, I'll quickly show you my outfit before I take that down, because it still feels a bit warm. So I decided to go for the beautiful floral, green floral Erdem dress. There's something about the material that feels 
quite warm. <laughs> the fit is absolutely heavenly. The way that it fits me here is as though it has been made for me. I think I did say yesterday, didn't I? That if it didn't fit perfectly, I'd take it to a tailor's to get it to fit perfectly, but it literally fits like a glove. Let's just take this out. Boing. <laughs> there we go, my hair is done for the day. Fling that back. Ooh, is that bangs? <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's just given a little bit of extra volume. I'll bring you down a touch. It's just a very elegant length. It finishes around mid calf and then I've popped on my Aquazura green heels. It's a very optimistic outfit based on the weather. Um, it's probably gonna rain later today, but we're gonna be inside in the kitchen living room area most of the day and it's very warm in there. So this is the outfit of the day. I love it. I think maybe I'm gonna be even more optimistic and actually take this as my little bag because I love how this looks with the raffia accessories oh my gosh I'm in love with this dress and the thing is it's a lot more casual than my Oscar de la Renta but yet it's still truly fabulous again great potential wedding guest dress option the silhouette is so elegant love it okay let's go so here is the final result, Ooh, oh my gosh it's a bit stuck, of the rhubarb and rose cake. As you can see cake decorating is not my forte but hopefully it'll taste delicious. I've just gone for a buttercream icing with, no I can't see him, with dried rose petals on top. Now I've just got to figure out how to transport it. <laughs> Thank you. 